Hello, I'm Bill Harris from the Department of Physiology, Development and Neuroscience at the University of Cambridge. Santiago Ramon y Cajal recognized that neurons, like these Purkinje cells in the cerebellum, are highly polarized structures with a dendritic tree on one side and an axon on the other. In the retina, Cajal used this anatomical polarization to trace the flow of information from apical to basal in the photoreceptors, then the bipolars, and finally the retinal ganglion cells, each of which has a basally emerging axon. We were interested in finding out how it is that retinal ganglion cells always polarize in this particular orientation. Is it cell autonomous because the cells have an inherent orientation? Or is it because there's a cue in the environment that polarizes the retinal ganglion cells? And if there is a cue, what is it? Hi, I'm Owen Randlett. I'm a PhD student in Bill's lab. So many studies have been done on neuronal polarization, with the most popular model being cultured hippocampal neurons. And when you image these cells as they're polarizing in vitro, in isolation, they go through a period known as stage two, where multiple neurites are extended in various orientations and seem to be competing to form the axon. And one of these is eventually selected and extends to form the axon. In 2006, Neuron published a very interesting paper on, the trunk, on a truncated kinesin. And this construct during the stage two phase shows an oscillatory behavior where it transiently accumulates in different stage two neurites moving within the cell Eventually, it stabilizes in one neurite, and this extends to form the axon. We performed essentially the exact same experiment, but using cultured retinal ganglion cells and found the same result, where there is a, a period of oscillation, the, then the signal stabilizes in one place, and that, ex, that part of the cell extends to form the axon. But what we were really interested in is what happens in vivo. In a previous study, Flavio Zalesi, who was a postdoc in the lab, imaged retinal ganglion cells in vivo through their polarization and found that there wasn't a stage two phase and instead the axon emerges directly basally. And when I imaged the kinesin construct we found a similarly directed behavior where the construct is first off in the cell body and then as the basal process re-extends it's in the basal process and then extends into the axon. So there was no evidence of an oscillatory stage two like phase. The retinal neuroepithelium has a basal extracellular matrix rich in a molecule known as laminin. Laminin promotes neurite outgrowth, axon outgrowth, in many CNS neurons, including retinal ganglion cells. Uh, we wondered, therefore, whether laminin might be the cue that is polarizing retinal ganglion cells in this consistent orientation. So to test this, we blocked laminin protein production using a morpholino oligonucleotide. And in this context, retinal ganglion cells lost their highly directed polarization behavior and went through a stage two-like phase where they were multipolar, extended some transient neurites, uh, the kinesin construct oscillated within the cell, and then finally the axon extended. These experiments show us that laminin is necessary for retinal ganglion cell polarization, but is it sufficient? For this last set of experiments, we wanted to reintroduce laminin into these laminin-deficient retinas. So we used a sharp glass capillary to inject small beads coated with laminin into the retina to assess their influence on the surrounding ganglion cells. And we found that when a polarizing ganglion cell came in contact with the bead, the kinesin construct accumulated at the contact point and the axon sprouted from this point, uh, demonstrating that laminin is sufficient to orient this polarization decision of ganglion cells in vivo. So laminin is important for retinal ganglion cell polarization, but it might not be the only thing, because even in the absence of laminin, after the exploratory stage 2-like behavior, retinal ganglion cells in vivo still tend to send their axons out in a basally directed manner. So maybe there is an inherent intrinsic polarization to the cells, or maybe there's another cue that we don't know yet. 
Our results also suggest that the more stochastic polarization behaviors typical of neurons polarizing in vitro and not seen for neurons, at least not for ganglion cells in vivo, may be due to the lack of a relevant cue in vitro, as when we remove the cue in vivo, the cells revert to a more culture-like behavior. You know, one way to think about this is like the blue line in hockey, eh? When you see the blue line, you know which way to shoot the puck, eh? Oh yeah, it is like that, eh? Yeah. And we'd like to thank our collaborators, Lucia Poggi and Flavio Zalesi, and also our funders, the Wellcome Trust.